Hey everybody, this is Colton with POSGuys.com and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Zebra ZT231 Industrial Label Printer, which I have right here. Uh, this is one of their newest entries to their Industrial Label Printer line and it is a direct replacement to the ZT220 and the ZT230, uh, which was discontinued, both of those, in about mid-2022. Uh, so they've kind of consolidated the two into a single model here. Uh, at the time of recording, this is Zebra's most affordable industrial printer. Uh, and it's you can pick up some units for under $1,000 uh, if you want to go with direct thermal models, uh, which is a pretty uncommon thing for industrial printers as far as they go. And after doing some testing and comparing some specs, uh, you know, with this and some of the other things on the market, I don't think that they had to sacrifice many features to get to that price point. And I think it's actually a pretty darn good value uh, for the price that you're paying. In fact, um, if you kind of compare it to its predecessor, the ZT231 is rated to print almost double uh, the print speed of its predecessor, clocking it at 12 inches per second, as opposed to, uh, sorry, <laughs> clocking it at 12 inches per second at 203 DPI, and eight inches per second at 300 DPI. Uh, and that's comparing to the ZT230's six inches per second. Uh, there's a couple other cool features, some upgrades to the uh, screen here in the front, uh, but we will get into the nitty gritty of all of that later. Uh, but first, I thought what I would do, I would zoom you in a little bit here. We can take a little bit of a tour around the printer, take a look at the exterior, and then crack open the hood here uh, off on the side and look at you know, what this printer has to offer for the price point that it's at. So with that, I'll zoom you in and let's get started. All right, so now that we're zoomed in here, I can start to go into uh, the unit a little bit more and I'll start off with covering some of the high level features. Um, it is a 20, it's gonna come in at about 20 pounds. Most of that is due to the uh, metal construction that's all around. Um, the exterior casing and some of the internal components are made of a very durable metal. Uh, and overall, I'm just super impressed with the build quality on this. Um, you could definitely tell that they took their time. Um, the craftsmanship is pretty nice. Uh, and it just feels like a super stable unit altogether. Um, dimension wise, uh, if that's something that you're concerned about, it is gonna be 17, and a, uh, 17 inches long here, uh, nine and a half inches wide and 11 inches tall. There are some models uh, with like liner take-ups that are a little bit bigger, um, but not by too much. Um, the other big feature here is gonna be this touchscreen that's on the front. Um, some of the previous models didn't have this, so this is a big improvement. Uh, it's a three color LED resistive screen, weighing in at about 4.3 inches. Um, the resistive is nice so that you can uh, you know, touch it with gloved hands, wet hands, things like that. Uh, the capacitive screens are a little bit harder on that. So it's good that Zebra took the care to uh, you know, use that piece of technology. Uh, and I'll zoom in and do a little bit of some B-roll footage for the screen here. I know it's a little hard uh, to see with the zoomed out view, um, but this is a super handy touchscreen. Makes doing troubleshooting a lot easier. Um, you can you know, get status indications, different changes. If you open the printer and engage the print head, it'll throw a little air up. Um, there's how-to videos on there, and you can adjust a lot of the printer settings from that device. Uh, so, you know, you can change the, uh, you know, the DPI settings, the print head temperature uh, alignment, just a whole bunch of really nitty-gritty detail uh, that's super handy to be able to do on the device as opposed to having to plug it into a computer and then use the um, downloadable tool that Zebra offers. Um, another cool feature that this printer has and some of Zebra's other industrial printers have, um, some of their higher level stuff, is called ZBI. It's their Zebra Basic Interpreter Language. Um, it's a little different from ZPL, which lays out the actual like, you know, printing of the label itself. Uh, with ZBI, you can actually load custom programs onto the printer. So you can build custom user interfaces, um, allow the functionality to connect like peripherals, like barcode scanners to the device if you want to do like a scan to print job. Um, and you can even set it up to where you can run print jobs without needing this thing to be connected to a PC or a network. Uh, so if you're you know, out in the field or something where you need to have this for some reason, or if you have some security restrictions, there's a ton of flexibility that you have with this printer uh, if that's something that you're interested in. If you are interested in that, uh, definitely give us a call uh, or you can view the blog post on our website, which is linked in the description uh, if you're on YouTube. Um, we have some documentation there that goes into a little more about ZBI. It's a uh, definitely a little bit of a higher level feature and definitely not entry level, so you'll for sure need a little bit of help with that. 
Um, flipping to the back of the printer here. Zoom it around, there you go. Try to zoom that in a little bit more. Um, all models of this printer are gonna come with a variety of standard connectivity options. So that's USB, your USB host, serial and ethernet. Uh, plus there's models that have a tap to pair functionality with NFC compatible mobile devices. Uh, I haven't seen too many people utilize that. Uh, and, so, and there are a couple caveats. So again, if you're interested, give us a call so we can kind of give you the nitty gritty on how that works. Um, some models will also come additionally with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 compatibility. Um, and you can also in field install uh, like second uh, ethernet ports, Wi-Fi uh, cards, and some other additional interface options. So you kind of have a little bit of flexibility there, right? Um, taking a look over on this side here, um, you're gonna see that they kind of engineered the device with a little bit of a compact bi-folding door. Um, and that's gonna reduce the height of the printer overall and kind of makes it easy to access the internals. It kind of does a little thing right here. Um, a quick thing I'll highlight, cause I was actually uh, surprised by this and I hadn't considered how useful it's gonna be. Um, Zebra took the time to uh, print uh, the little, a bunch of helpful little quick tips, so to speak. So you have, you know, loading instructions here, uh, printed on this, you're gonna have um, status icon, uh, walkthroughs so you can kind of you know at a glance figure out what's wrong if you don't have a ton of knowledge on the printer uh, and then there's also a little uh, ruler here which I had never seen before and that's um, super duper handy if you're trying to load media on the fly and don't have a ruler uh, so I just thought that was a really cool attention to detail and I thought I'd uh, point it out for sure so taking a look at this here let me I'm gonna readjust the camera real quick so you can get a little bit of a better view here uh, and then we'll start to dig into the uh, internals on here a little bit better. So I'll be right back with that. Okay, so we are zoomed in even more here and I've moved the camera angles around uh, so that you, you, know, you can get the best view possible here. I know there's a lot going on. Um, overall, it's a pretty straightforward setup. Uh, this is obviously the thermal transfer model. Um, so it's gonna have the additional ribbon spool here. Um, Talked about the printing specs a little bit before, but I'll go over them again. This is uh, 12 inches per second at 203 DPI and eight inches per second at 300 DPI, the double what its predecessor, the ZT230 had. Um, otherwise, the printing capability on this is pretty darn similar. Um, you're gonna have the media holder right here and it has a little clamp. Uh, it's adjustable so you, know, you can make sure everything is fitting super snug and secure. Um, it can accept labels up to 4.09 inches in size total. Um, that's not the label uh, per se, but you know, the little liner on here as well. Um, like all industrial printers, it can accept industrial size label rolls all the way up to eight inches in diameter on a three inch inner core or labels at six inches in diameter on a one inch core. Uh, and it can also accept continuous media die cut notch and black mark media as well. Uh, and there's like a little uh, piece here, uh, the little gap on the second camera should be able to pick this up a little bit better um, that you know you can kind of feed media through with an external holder of some sort. Um, the Taking a look at the ribbon, uh, there's a couple different options, but this little trigger right here will disengage and engage the media. Uh, or the ribbon rather, and so it kind of clamps down. And it's a very sturdy mechanism, um, which is really nice. Uh, loading is pretty simple. Uh, I had my um, tech team take a look and play around with this a little bit and just to give me a little bit of feedback. Um, their complaints was that some of the adjustment settings, so there's like a little, uh, you know, a little adjustment setter here to kind of increase and decrease the tension um, on the label. Uh, and then of course, print head, or uh, not print head, sorry, but um, the sensors for the media over the ribbon uh, and some of those, they complain that it's a little hard to get into, especially if you have larger fingers. Mine are kind of small, so it's not such a big deal for me. Um, but, you know, if you have larger hands, that is definitely a consideration. Uh, it can be a little hard to work around. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty standard setup, of course. The ribbon comes out through here through the inside uh, and then ports out here and wraps around to the other spool holder. 
Um, so that's pretty nice. The rib, or not the ribbon, sorry, the uh, print head is relatively easy to swap out and you have different models. Um, so if you have, you know, different types of media, linerless media, um, you can kind of support that with this. Uh, you just need to swap that out, of course. Um, so yeah, overall, a pretty simple standard setup as far as those go, um, but it's very sturdy and I'm pretty impressed with it overall. So with that, I'm gonna click this back into place and I'm gonna go ahead, pull up a computer here, get this connected, uh, and then we'll print out some test labels uh, so you can, you know, kind of compare that and see how they look. So I will be right back. And sorry, that was probably a little loud. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. Okay, perfect. So we are zoomed in here, all ready to go. I've uh, positioned the camera here and opened the tray so that you can kind of take a look at the mechanism in here as we're doing the print. I have a little template here ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and print this. Uh, and we'll print off five, why not? There you go. Stops right there on the uh, tear bar. Nice little tear. And uh, yeah, so just taking a look at the labels here. This is a thermal transfer, of course. Uh, so they're the poly labels, so a little shinier. Uh, than if you were doing a paper label. Uh, but as you can tell, the printing is pretty darn sharp on the barcodes themselves. We have a little QR code here, um, and that's pretty crisp as well. Uh, and then I did a little image as well that's supposed to be a hamburger, uh, and it doesn't show up too great, but you know, you're taking a color photo uh, and making it black and white. So those never, uh, those tend never to show up too well, but I thought I'd throw it on anyway. This little POS guy's logo right here, um, that is also an image, and you can tell it shows up a lot better because uh, it's natively black and white. So yeah, those are the labels there. Um, there's a ton of different things you can do uh, with them, but it prints out pretty well. And you know, the uh, Zebra's always been pretty good about that. Uh, so I didn't have a hesitation really on that. So good to see that this one performs on par with the rest of their printers. Uh, and again, this is a 203 model. So you know, if you were to upgrade to a 300 DPI, you're gonna be able to get these uh, QR codes here, super duper small. So yeah. What I'm gonna go ahead and do, uh, so I'll go ahead and zoom you back out here and we can wrap up the last little things that I have about this printer. Perfect, we're back out here now. Uh, so yeah, wrapping up a couple of the last little bits here on this printer. Um, there are a bunch of field upgradable uh, options that you have on this printer. Uh, so if you wanted to do uh, a cutter or a peeler accessory, you know, instead of having the tear bar here, uh, you could either have it just cut and fall off into like a little tray, or you have a peeler take up model. Um, and that's actually a separate model that you, that's not a field upgradable one. That's the one caveat there. Um, I spoke a little bit earlier, but essentially that just takes the liner, um, peels off the liner from the back here, right? Uh, and kind of just peel and presents it so that it would look like, you know, that essentially when it's being presented to you. Um, another thing that this printer has is some onboard analytics tools. So it can detect if different parts of the printer are out, you know, if your print head is going out, um, so that you can help, uh, you know, plan a maintenance in advance. So it kind of gives you some of that analytical feedback. Um, and a lot of the tools are pretty, or a lot of the internal components are pretty easy to replace. The platen uh, and the print head are able to be removed without any special tools. Uh, so it just makes maintenance super easy on this printer. Um, if you'd prefer not to have to visit the printer directly in order to do troubleshooting, uh, Zebra has a print profile manager tool uh, as part of their print DNA package, uh, which allows you to kind of manage uh, a bunch of different printers uh, on any network device that you might have on here, right? So you can do that from a browser-based interface, so you don't even need to be in the same building in order to keep an eye on these printers. Uh, but that's pretty standard with, across Zebra's profile. Uh, that's not something that's super unique to this printer. Um, but with that, that basically wraps up the points that I wanted to make on this thing. Uh, I think it's a super solid printer. Um, if you're looking for like a direct thermal only model, you can, get, uh, you can pick up some of these at a really good price. Um, and it performs super duper well. And you know, with the maintenance tools that it's available, that it has available, uh, and some of those, you know, early detection things. You should be able to keep this printer running for a super long time. Uh, and if anything does go out, of course, uh, Zebra has their warranties, extended contracts, plus their standard manufacturer warranty. Uh, so, you know, you'll be taken care of regardless of what happens to this printer. Uh, so with that, I will leave you all off. Um, thank you all so much for taking the time uh, to watch this video. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or an email. Both of those are on the screen now. Uh, but with that, 
Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day, everybody. Take care.